shall come again The shouts of joy For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. 
Yet perhaps for a good man, some may even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, Jesus died to save you from your sin, not to leave you in it. Jesus didn't die so you could come to Panama City Beach and get drunk. Jesus didn't die so you could come lust after immodestly dressed women and have sex with them. Jesus didn't come so that you could smoke marijuana and do whatever you want and enjoy your life. He came so that you could be reconciled back to the Father, so that you could be saved and set free from your sin and washed clean. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, starting in verse 9, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be ye not deceived, no liar, nor fornicator, nor effeminate, nor homosexual, nor covetous, nor reviler, nor extortioner, nor drunkard shall inherit the kingdom of God. But listen up, this is the most important part. And as such were some of you, you know God's going to drop you out of his kingdom. Don't give him one. I hey, don't give him one, man. He's a mocker. Shame on you. It's shameful to be a sinner. It is. Yeah, only a wicked pervert would do such a wicked thing. You won't be doing that in front of God on judgment day. And God's going to throw you down just like you threw that word of God on the gospel track. He's going to toss you down into the pits of hell for your wickedness because you want to mock the preaching of the gospel. Here comes the most important part. But as were some of you, but you were washed clean. You were sanctified by the blood of Christ, and you were justified. You see, you are justified by Jesus Christ and his sacrifice if you keep his commandments. 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And by this we know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, he who says, I know him but does not keep his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him that's right you could say i know jesus i believe in jesus all day long that's not gonna save you what saves you is obeying jesus you see i have an earthly father here on earth i, I might not have the best relationship with him but i love him dearly and i, I minister to him the truth all the time when I was younger, my dad told me to not touch the hot stove. Now, I believed that he was my dad. I believed him when he said he was my dad. But I didn't believe him when he said the stove was hot and it would burn me. And I touched that stove, and I got burned. The same goes for the Heavenly Father. You can believe in Jesus all day long. You've taken the spirit and the body of Jesus. You've taken the in that holiness and you are able to give love are you a sinner each and every one around you're you a sinner. sinner if you consider a sinner drinking alcohol and having a good time doing nicotine serving another master doing nicotine serving another master god put nicotine on the earth no, not, not for you to vape it not, not for you to vape did, it did god not put you don't know what god did well, you don't serve him you don't do read you, his word do you know what god yeah, absolutely did. i do why do you know why do you know why because you i read know? his word and i abide why in him read God's word because you take his gospel and you throw it on the ground you I take spent, God's word and you throw it on the ground, you wicked sinner. I spent, you have no idea who God is and what he I did. Spent three you have no clue. You're a hypocrite. I you walk around I, acting like you're I so spent, good, but you're living in willful sin. And respect, this is the problem. So this is what people do. You. They you walk around, around and they have a form of self-righteousness, and they claim that we are self-righteous. But they themselves are self-righteous because they believe in the midst of their wicked sin that they're right with God. But if God was okay with sin, tell me this. Why did he cast out of Eve out of the garden over one sin? If God was okay with sin, why did he destroy the Canaanites? Every man, woman, and child. If God was okay with sin, why did he flood the entire world and kill everyone except eight people? If God was okay with sin, why did he destroy Sodom and Gomorrah with fire from heaven? Why? Because he hates it. So why are you guys telling me your opinion on your opinion? That's not our opinion. And how do you think you're right with God when you walk in sin every single day? Okay, so where do you think you're lying to yourself? You're deceiving yourself. No, you may believe this truth. From the Christian church? You may fullheartedly put your faith in God will forgive you no matter what you do. But if you keep doing it, you will not be 
Absolutely, God spoke to you. Please. I wasn't raised in a Christian household. I was not told about that. I was. I was. And I don't hold that against you. Because I love you. I love you as a man. Because I was 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 I
No. We're you can love workers. God. You can love God, God. God. You can believe with all your heart, and you can still sin, and you can ask for forgiveness. It's not true. You can't love God and sin at the same time. It's not, love, is, love is not a feeling. Love is a Everybody is you human. Will be reported. You are not the Jesus himself. You, no, you are not afraid of sin. You have sinned before your life. I didn't claim that I was Jesus. To prove that you have never sinned, you are not human. I didn't say I've never sinned. Jesus died for us for our sins. We're not talking about our past sins. We're talking about present. And God commands you to repent. To you stop cannot it. serve God. Go and no more. He who not to continue in sin and abuse his grace. But go and sin no more. Everything you know you shouldn't be doing, forever. you can stop it. Otherwise, you don't love Jesus. Those are the words of Jesus forever. Christ. Not your feelings. He the words of Jesus Christ. That's what he said. I think everybody has interpretations of the Bible. Amen. Interpret this. If you love me, keep my commandments. I think a lot of people that preach like this are hypocrites. Well, that could be true, but we're not hypocrites. So when it comes to Jesus, once again, there's no way to misinterpret this. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. There's no way to misinterpret that you can't make that vague no, and broad brush and yourself, muddy the water. So anytime woman, you ever you say you're saying you didn't love him, exactly. You don't know the Lord. Right. Exactly. You, you the do love Jesus him. Christ no, not what I'm saying. Then why do you ask for forgiveness? No, no. If you're sinning, you don't love him according you're to Jesus. This rebuke, you I'm, I'm, woman, I you guess I would consider Christian. myself a little more of a Christian. But I think this. Do you know what Jesus said about that? Huh? Do you know what Jesus said about Luke 1? They're worse than people that don't believe. No, no, that's not what he said. He said, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. I'm going to vomit you out of my mouth. I will go to hell, even though I love him. No, no, that's not true. He doesn't send people to hell who love him. He sends people to hell who don't love him. But if you you're saying you if you ever sin, you don't love him. Car, you can hospitalize well, in that moment lives. of time, I did. You know but I've turned the from, the from my sins, and now I do love him. So you never sin. You never the do the only only anything there bad. Save you from ever in your life. Well, I've sinned in the past. But from now on, you'll never do anything bad. You'll never lie. You'll never do anything bad. I'm answering your question right now. Listen, I've sinned in the past tens of thousands of times. For my own shame. I'm presently not sinning at all. And I have no intention to sin in the future, but I don't know what the future holds. Sin, whether I will sin or not. Now, if I sin in the future and go back to my sins, I'm in trouble with God again and must repent and confess my sin afresh to receive forgiveness. True repentance now. Okay? So, so that's what God expects out of us. No different rules for me than are for you. If I go back to my sin, I'm going to hell as a lukewarm people by first and myself. But I have no intention of doing that. I intend to abide, abide in you. Jesus Christ and live for him the rest How of my day. That's what he wants you to do. Okay to and it's possible because he gives you grace. He gives I you strength. He gives you power to Christians overcome sin. I think I am a good person with a pure heart. And sin. even though I drink Christians every now and then, that doesn't Christians, make me a per bad person that's going to hell. And you're deceiving yourself. Now, you've made up a law in your mind that's contrary to what God says in his word to make yourself feel better in your sin. But I want to love you with the truth tonight and tell you the truth that you're deceiving yourself. Okay, the word of God like says Christ what it says. Lives. You can Someone disagree with it if you want like and do your own thing, but you, you can't twist it and make it seem different. It says what it says. Jesus was willing Jesus to said, kill his own son for me. God. Like, that that, that within itself was a sin. What does this mean? No, this Jesus didn't murder. Say. You Jesus said, no, said, he was Christ willing. He was willing to sacrifice. God sinned? Not God. Who sinned? Jesus was not God. Jesus was God in flesh. No, it was not Jesus. In Genesis, Want Someone gave up their son and sacrifice. That is murder. Are you talking about Abraham and Isaac? Probably. Okay, well, do you understand the whole story? I'm, I'm a little intoxicated, which you're probably going to hell for, but I've read the Bible, I believe, I love God, and I think that Believing is not enough. Believing is not enough. The Bible says demons believe and tremble. I think loving God is enough. But you don't love God, you're not giving his commandments. You You've already gone through that. It makes it abundantly clear in the scripture. Don't deceive you yourself. Open your, to Open your eyes to the truth. Open your ears to the truth. The description, the word is open to interpretation. No, if you love me, keep my commandments. It's not open to interpretation. The, the biggest Christians are the most racist of people. There's no racist here. But I'm saying... There are, there are pastors that, very, that harm children. Clear, right? And where do you think they're going to go? Huh? Where do you think they're going to go? But they're pastors. They, what does they that give mean? their life. They don't get it. They don't so get it. who am I to know that you're telling me the truth right now? Well, look in the Bible for yourself. You got us, Mo. John 14, 15. Yeah, see? This is... I love God and I'll see you in heaven, buddy. I can gladly turn it up for you, officer. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I can turn it down, that's it.
turn it up. Uh, I got on the speaker. I said turn it down, man. How'd you, how'd you miss hear that? I got you guys. I got you. No problem. No problem. Absolutely. 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 I think we can't do away. Uh, no, no, no. Okay, but here's here's the thing. It's a little bit different situation here because we're in a commercial district where they're they're playing loud music. I can hear way more than 20 feet away. So if you're gonna make, hold us, they gotta hold them to that too. It's not different. I try to I try to slow down when people walk past it too. I don't want to cause problems. We're not here for that. So. However, a PA system is counted on a different scale than what this business is. Okay, well, because I had to go through the school. Okay, but I would say this: freedom of speech is freedom to be heard. Okay, if, I, if the people who I'm trying to speak to can't hear me because of their noise, that's unconstitutional. You're, you're playing favorites. By allowing them to play music loud that's heard it, way over 50 the feet away. The, the law is written, they have a certain scale that they have to abide by. What scale the is that? The system is the C scale. What it scale is, is that? ordinance C scale. What scale is it for them, sir? That's what I'm saying, that's the C scale. This actually says a PA cannot be heard more than 25 feet. The law specifically says- Well, it's 50 feet, sir, not 25. Yeah, 50. Sorry, 50. But even if it's 50, I can- Well, then this officer just said 50 feet, too, so. Oh, okay, I didn't hear that, sorry. Yeah. We actually printed it out for you yesterday but, uh, because I, I was yeah. one of the officers that talked I, to you. I read it, sir. I've been abiding by it. But like I said, it's different out here because we're dealing with noise. When we're out in front of Pineapple Williams, we don't have this noise coming out of the Pineapple Williams that we're trying to overcome so they can hear our message. It's different, sir. I mean, I've been doing this for almost, almost 20 years, sir. I've done it in cities all across America and across the world, and this is basically the way it works. If there's ambient noise coming from a building, I'm allowed to overcome that, to be heard. No, sir, you're not. So you're telling me I can't be heard by people? I'm not saying you can't be heard by people. What I'm saying is, is you can't be using the BA to do it. If you can make your voice ten times louder than that, make your voice ten times louder. Okay, so so, so you cannot use the PA system. Okay, but, but okay, so 50 feet. Where do you think 50 feet from going that way is? Someone tells you. It doesn't matter. It's 50 feet in all directions. Okay, but I'm pointing in this direction, sir. But I can hear it coming from down the road. Well, it might be echoing off the building, but it, I, there's no way you're hearing down there we're pointing it this way. You see, I want them right there to hear me, and they're 50 feet away. I'm trying to get them to hear me, sir. So, again, like I'm telling you, and like we said yesterday, okay. I'm trying to help you out by not putting you into a situation. I understand. I'm not trying to stop your message. I'm not trying to do anything like that. I'm just, I'm just trying to reason with you, sir. Just trying to reason with you about it. The problem is, like I said, the law that we have, that we printed it for you, specifically says that a PA system has a certain debt. Sir, I have it right here in my pocket. I've read it. I, I mean, you can look at it if you want. I've read it. I know what it says, but it's a different situation because of what we're dealing with right here. It's the only point I'm making. That doesn't address this situation, sir. Yes, this man named Jesus Christ, what did he do? He came into this world and died on a cross to set you free from your sin. How are you living for the Lord Jesus Christ tonight? Out here, getting drunk, rubbing against each other half naked. You know, today y'all are celebrating a day called St. Patrick's Day. We have people come up to us all the time and they say, well, y'all aren't saints. There are no more so saints. Saints are in the Bible. Well, there's a bit of a problem with that. This part of the statute that he that was printed out for you yesterday doesn't talk about the difference between like commercial audio, like music devices and everything, and I understand that. However, unfortunately, because this is level D, it doesn't say that you have exceptions because of it being a tourist station. Right? No, I understand it that. It clearly says 50 feet. No, I understand so, that. I wasn't disagreeing with that, sir. I'm simply telling you this is a different situation than that situation. But the point is, it's 50 feet, it's 50 feet. If I can hear your message from 50 feet away, you're by breaking this law. Well, so the point I'm trying to make, sir, is that this is not all encompassing this piece of paper and what it says. And, and so every place I've gone, including in Florida, at different places in Florida, there's always different rules and exceptions for commercial districts where there's ambient noise Which, being you, played. Right, commercial, like this building, has a, a difference because they have to be measured on a C scale, right? Theirs actually has to be measured. So I have to take my sound device and I have to come out here and I have to sit here on their property line, like the sidewalk, and I have to listen to them. I get an ambient, or not an ambient, but I get their sound production device level, right? Then I have to go to an area, I either, the preferred method is to go in the same spot and ask them to turn the music off for about 30 seconds. I measure it. Then that gives me my ambient sound versus their noise production device sound, right? And then I use a sliding C scale. There's a math involved in it. They have so many points at certain times of the day. Yeah, I'm not really, talk I'm not really talking about them necessarily. But what, but what I'm saying, though, that's how our city ordinance, which is what this is, is right. written. And that's what it says. I think you're, misunderstanding, I think you're misunderstanding me, though. That's not what this, But our city ordinance is specific.
specifically that says any handheld portable audio device, it doesn't matter if you're tourist district or not tourist district, that device can only be heard from uh, 50 feet. Okay, so, that, so I think you missed my point though, sir. I wasn't talking about them. I'm talking about us near them. Okay, so when they go to an area where it's commercial, and I don't know if your law says anything about this or not, but every other city I've gone to that I can think of, when you're in a commercial district, because there's noise coming from buildings like clubs and bars, the rules are different for amplification devices because I'm trying to overcome the ambient noise the in the laws area. don't specify that. The law specifies what I'm telling you. That for that device, it tells you you have 50 feet. So you're telling me the piece of paper you gave me is the only thing that you have in law that talks about amplification? Or from a handheld portable device, yes. Well, it's not in my hand. You get what I'm saying. It's a portable device. It's a speaker on a stand. Okay, well, I'm, I'm going to go on Municode.com and research this some more right now to check to see what you're saying is true or not. It doesn't sound right to me, sir. Okay. And I'm not, I'm not an unlawful citizen. I'm a law abiding citizen. I've been doing this for a long time. I don't want any issues. I want to I want to obey whatever laws there are. But it sounds unconstitutional to me, sir. It does. It sounds like what? It sounds unconstitutional to me. It's not. No, sir, but, but if I can reason with you, besides the law we've talked about, putting that aside so can reason unconstitutionality, they can be louder than me is unconstitutional. That's 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 a sound. I'm speaking. I'm speaking the word of God, which is freedom of religion, freedom of speech. That's a sound. There's no freedom of sound in the, in the Constitution. Uh, and you know what? And you might have a leg of stand on in that okay. argument, but unfortunately, until a court decides that, it is what it is, right? But that's, that's the point I'm making, though. Yeah. I'm just telling you it's unconstitutional. So I'm gonna look it up on Unicode.com and I'll go from there. But our uh, our sound laws were actually written by a Rutgers professor. Uh, professor so I he mean, could have it wrong i mean he's a person too just like anybody right yeah. he's fallible i get it and it's not even so. that it's, it's, it, there's bias too i mean we're not going to assume everybody's objective and, and, and cares about freedom of speech uh, there's people who don't care about yeah. that it's not even about him being wrong Pedophilia is a sexuality. It's an attraction to children. And you're, you're just completely getting hurt. Anybody who has that temptation, you're just throwing them out. They don't exist. But if we did that to homosexuals, that'd be a problem. You see, this is where your this is where your hypocrisy falls in and it breaks down. Who you are because you don't believe a pedophile is born that way, but you believe a homosexual is born that way. That's hypocrisy. Well, you're wrong. You, you're thinking wrong. And I love you. That's why I'm telling you that. I don't hate you. I really don't. If that's the case, murderers are born that way. They're not. That, I'm arguing no one's born that way. You're arguing they are. So the burden of proof is upon you, not me, my friend. Well, guess what? If you say Jesus on hell, all I know is I don't get it. Don't go to hell, man. I love you, man. I care about you, all right? You got to get rid of that homosexuality. Yeah, hey, bro, you want to preach? Yeah, I'm just done. Hey, I'm done. Turn to Jesus. Jesus died for you. He rose again from the grave, defeating death. Jesus accepts everyone regardless nope, of No, not true. Not that's true. your opinion. No, nope, that's, that's the opinion. word of God. That's your opinion. The Bible says God will commit most people to hell. Yeah, that's just the Bible was written the by The Bible is God's word. All right, so God wrote it. Through men, yes. So, like, I'm a man, too, so I'm going to write the Bible as well. You're, you're an unholy man. You don't write. You're according not qualified. To you, according you're not to according you. to the Bible. According to you. You're not boy. qualified to write the Bible. Hey, I'm man. not a boy. I'm th over twice your age, man. Come on. Think a little better than that. Hey, my bad. I thought, I thought there were two genders. There's boy and girl, right? Exactly. I'm not a boy. That's your opinion. Are you a little boy? Jesus loves everyone. Are you a man? Bro. Jesus loves Are you everyone. a boy or a man? Jesus loves everyone. I ain't everyone. there, bro, man. Doesn't matter. Hey, man, I respect you, but, like, dude. No, I don't think you do. Jesus you don't like, respect God. You don't respect Jesus. Hey, look, you disagree you, with hey, God and his word and Jesus and hey, his word. Look, you're calling him liar. Look, man, if you don't love everyone, you're not living through God. you got to accept everyone regardless of if they're No, man. love does not equal acceptance. All right, man, that's your opinion. You no, that's what? the word of God. All right, I really don't care. God is love. You don't care, I understand, but all God right. is love, all right. and God does not accept everybody. All right, I don't, all right, God loves everyone. Do you accept me? Of course, man. Then why, why are you arguing with me? Tell me I'm wrong. 
If you accept hey, me, hey, see now you're a hypocrite. God loves everyone regardless. Are you of accepting me gay. the way I am? God loves everyone regardless right, of your gay. You're wrong. Sin. You're wrong. That's why. You're wrong. Dude, all right, man, that's your opinion. God sent sinners to hell. I'm gonna leave. Not my opinion. It's the word of God. I'm gonna leave because you seem to not think that God loves everyone. You have no, I didn't say that. Now you're a liar. Now you're everyone. falsely accusing me. God loves now you're everyone. falsely accusing hey, me. Hey, man, I'll say it to the camera, bro. God loves everyone regardless of your beliefs, your sexuality, what you believe in, bro. Hell? God, goes to hell? that's your opinion. God yeah, loves everything. Everything that's in the word God's hey, word is, your, is our opinion. If you want to be a bigot and not like people for what they want to do, is God a bigot? Your is God a bigot? God loves everyone, bro. Hey, man, that's why you're standing outside a club doing nothing. You're fucking with signs. Hey you're man, man. y'all probably don't like minorities either. God loves everyone. Now you're a hypocrite. Now you're, you're a false accuser and a liar. What a liar! The Bible says in Matthew 7, 13 through 14, the words of Jesus Christ: "Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way which leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it." But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. This is the words of Jesus Christ. This is not my opinion. This is not my religion I made up. This is the words of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ will condemn sinners. Yeah. Everybody's got a line they draw on the sound of who they will and won't accept. Love does not equal tolerance. Love does not equal acceptance. That's not the way it works in God's kingdom. God does not accept everybody. God calls people to change. God calls people to repent. If you refuse to repent, God will not receive you. That's your choice. God will not force it upon you. God will not make you repent. God simply commands you to repent. He commands all men everywhere to repent because there's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. On Judgment Day for sinners, there'll be no laughing. Get all the laughing in now because on Judgment Day, it'll all cease for sinners. Judgment Day will be a terrible day for sinners. The Bible says, the Son of Man sends out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. As the word of God is clear on this, there's no ambiguity, there's no haziness, there's no mudding of the water, there's no vagueness when it comes to who will enter. I, I don't know who you are, I can't just shake your hand. Sorry. Sorry. Oh my God, you are hilarious, my guy. Won't be hilarious in hell, sinner. What? No, it won't be hilarious then. Try laughing while you're on fire everywhere. My guy, we love gays. We I'm not your guy. Gays. We love gays. We you're happy? Love gays. You look miserable to me. We love gays. We love gays. In other words, you're a sodomite? You're a sodomite? We love gays. You like to sodomize people? Is that what you're saying? No, I love everyone for who they are. Do you love me for who I am? Yeah. Then why are you trying to change me? Because you don't accept everyone. Oh, now you're a hypocrite. Sure. I'm trying to change other people because they're not who they should be, according to God's <laughs> word. You're funny. This but you want to change me. Hey, say hi to your TikTok. Y'all are idiots. I love everyone regardless of the... No, you, know, you don't love me. You don't love God. You don't love everyone. I love God. No, you don't. If you love God, you'll keep his commandments. You don't keep God's commandments, so you don't love him. Hey, I mean, Drunkers want to hear God's commandment, man. You used to think this is hilarious right now, but it won't be hilarious in hell, man. I'm warning you. Get right with God. While you still have breath in your lungs, while your heart's still beating, get right with God, man. I'm trying to talk to you. Like, no, I don't think you're trying to talk to me. You're trying to mock me. And mockers will... God is not mocked. You can mock me, but God's not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he shall also reap. I'm not even recording at all. I didn't say you were recording. I said you're trying to mock me. Let's go. Mock. Let's go. Oh. Leave these guys. These guys have nothing to do with their Saturday night. This is a Friday night, not Saturday night. Get your days right. You're probably too drunk. Probably too drunk to know what night it is. Huh? 
Well, it just kind of turned Saturday. He said Saturday night. It's Saturday morning. This is Saturday morning. Do you just normally go around to entertain with people who you don't even know? Is that normally what you do? We love Jez. That's weird. We support Jez. We support Jez. You support sin. You support wickedness. You support people going to hell. You support people going to hell. That's what you support. You don't really love homosexuals if you support them in their sin. You don't really love them. Oh, settle down. You support them going to hell is what you support. Hey man, you don't love them. First. You don't love them. I bet you I can beat you in a race. I mean, maybe a Fortnite, but like Battle Pass, I'm probably winning. Okay, man. Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I go to church. That doesn't help you. Going to a building does not make you right with God. Going to a building you call a church with a steeple and a cross does not make you right with God. Going to talk to some guy who calls himself a priest does not make you right with God. Don't deceive yourself. Now, going to a building that makes you no more a Christian than going to Subway makes you a sub sandwich. Okay, it's not the way it works. God does not say those things in his word. That if you go into a building, you're a Christian. But God says in his word, repent or perish. Repent or perish. That's what Jesus says. These are your two options. Repenting or perishing. Giving up your sin or holding on to it and going to hell. Those are your two options. There are no other options. There's no purgatory. There's no getting right with God after you die. This life is the only life you have. The only chance you have to get right with God is what the, the life you're breathing in right now. That's it. Once this life ends, the Bible says a point for the man wants to die, and after this comes the judgment. God is going to judge your life. He's going to judge you according to every thought, word, and deed. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. What has God seen in your life today? What thoughts have you been dwelling on today that are displeasing to God? What filthy words have come out of your mouth today that are displeasing to God? What actions have you committed today? I hope you learned truth about life that everyone loves everyone, then that you can go to jail today. Everyone does not love everyone. That's not true. It's not true. You don't love me, but I love you. No, you don't. You hate them. You hate, you hate gay people because you won't tell them they're wrong. You won't tell them they're going to hell. You won't tell them to repent. Therefore, you really don't love them. You hate them. Anybody who influences you to sin or encourages you to sin is not your friend. They do not love you. They hate you. You all have buddies you're here with tonight who you're sinning with. They're not really your friends. Not a true friend. They don't really love you. True love warns. True love influences towards the good, towards holiness, towards righteousness, not towards sin. Sin leads to hell. Stop being a sinner. Follow Jesus Christ. With that filthy mouth, you're right. You are going to hell. But you don't have to go to hell. Well, I was talking to your friend. Well, she had, she had a filthy mouth a second ago. And you're both dressed in modestly. So, yeah, they're both going to hell as of right now. Put more clothing on. You won't, be, you won't be cheering for it when you get there, sinner. Get all your mocking and cheering in now because they won't be cheering on that day. There'll be no cheering for sinners in hell. And here's, the, here's, the, here's the thing, though. Here's the scary thing for so many of you. You're not guaranteed tonight, let alone tomorrow. Tonight could be your last night. I wonder how many, I wonder how many sinners will die tonight on spring break. It's a terrible thing. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God for his eyes of fire and a double-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Why are you guys all colored up in green stuff? What happened? What happened? They got paint in there. Paint in there? The devil throwing paint on our asses. I mean, it's it's so it's so silly the things you guys do for fun, man. Wait, and name of fun. It's not fulfilling at all. That's true. I'm leaving. No, that's why we're leaving. Get right with God, man. That's fulfilling. Yeah, we are. We are. We are. Way too much sin going on. I'm actually Buddhist, but I I I appreciate all religions. Well, Jesus Christ commands you to repent, man. 
He's the king of kings and lord of lords, not Buddha. I love, I understand, I love all religions. I think that, uh... Well, that's not the way it works. Jesus said, I am the way, definite article, the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Everybody can make their own decision. Yes, you have free will, but, but the truth is the truth. <laughs> the truth is the truth. You can make your own decisions, but you don't get to choose the consequences for your decisions. God determines that. God determines the consequences for sinners as hell. Oh, you're, man, that's, that's just really novel, man. That's a really novel thing you're doing there, dancing around a sinner. No. It's not good. Get right with God, man. Get up the, fi the filthy Buddhism and get right with God. Follow Jesus. It's filthy. Every other religion is filthy. I would never say that. I love, hey, my whole That's because you don't have the truth, man. I don't I know why you won't say it. You don't have the truth. My whole family is Christian. I grew up going to church. Right? But you need to follow Jesus Christ. Yeah. Huh? I'm not talking about going to church. I'm talking about following Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ greed for my sins. Right? But you, you don't have forgiveness because you haven't repented and turned to him in faith. He greedy for my sins, though. Hey, what? He greedy for my sins. I don't know what word you're using. Gritty for your sins? What he was just doing. No, you're, I mean, God's not mocked, man. You're going to give account for your words. You understand? You think this is so funny, but every idle word you speak, you'll give an account of. So be, be careful what you say, man, because your words will condemn you. Only here once, man. No, God says these things. Only here once, my guy. Have you some fun tonight, all right? Uh, if you think fun is sin, then you're going to go to hell, man. Hey, the, by the way, this is quote unquote fun for me. This is what I enjoy doing. God's will. Glorifying God. Having eternal purpose in my life. Being amongst other brothers who do the same thing. That is what I enjoy. Obeying God. I don't enjoy the filth of the world anymore, the drunkenness, the sexual immorality, the lust, the filthy language. I abhor those things and want nothing to do with those things ever again. So. If you tell me to go have fun, I'm, I'm enjoying myself right now. This is what I enjoy, doing God's will. So it brings me the most joy, the most peace, the most comfort, is doing what God tells me to do. Well, don't praise Jesus dressed like that, living in sin. Follow Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus talks about a group of people who draw near to him with their mouth and honor him with their lips, but their heart is far from him. So these empty words of praise Jesus, I love Jesus, I know Jesus, I follow Jesus, I have Jesus in my heart, I go to church, it's all empty to God if your life does not match up with your words. I had a young lady talk to me earlier tonight who said, I sin all the time, I love to get drunk, I love to do such and such, but I love Jesus. And I give her Jesus' words, if you love me, keep my commandments, like she doesn't even get it. She ignores those things, what Jesus says, because she loves her sin. But you can't love your sin and love Jesus. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. For his mercy endures forever. For his mercy endures forever. He is merciful to you today. For God did not take your life today. He allowed you to wake up even though he knew that you were gonna come and sin against him tonight. But God prepared a word for you. God's mercy is poured out right now in your hearing that you are not dead in your sins, in your body, but you are dead in your spirit right now because of your sin. And God wants to wake you up tonight. God wants to wake you up out of your deadness and out of your slumber. He wants to open your eyes to the condemnation that is upon you right now as a sinner. Right now, if you died in your sin, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. If you died in your drunkenness, if you died of a drug overdose tonight, if you died of a car accident tonight. No, sir, it's not just that, no. And if you, if you honor Jesus, you will follow him and not live in sin. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. Just because you say you believe in Jesus, just because you recognize him as some kind of Lord or Savior, which he is, but your life does not line up with what you say, you are deceived. The Bible says not to be deceived. 
for fornicators and drunkards and homosexuals and transgenders and liars and blasphemers and fornicators and all idolaters and the fearful and unbelieving, they will end up in the lake of fire, regardless if you say that you know and love Jesus. Jesus even said in said. Matthew 7, okay, keep telling yourself that, sinner. Jesus even said in Matthew 7 that there are going to be many that come to him saying, Lord, Lord, many are going to come to Jesus when they die in this body and stand before him in spirit. Their soul is going to stand before Jesus and they're going to say, Lord, 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 and they think that they're going to enter into the kingdom because they go to church every Sunday. And these people that stood before Jesus, according to Jesus' own words, they said, Lord, look what we did. We prophesied in your name, Lord. We cast out demons in your name, Lord. We did many wonderful works in your name, Lord. I'll go even further. We went to church every Sunday, Lord. We gave to our church and we fed the homeless, Lord. We did all these good things. We helped people get to the party in free shuttle rides, Lord. Oh, Lord, we did all these wonderful works in your name. Yes. There's another part in scripture that says, we heard you preaching in our streets, Lord. We heard you. We went to church and heard your word. And what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say to these people? Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. Here they are. They're still here. They can't leave. I accept Ye that work iniquity, for I never knew you, Jesus said. But, but who will enter the kingdom of heaven according to Matthew 7? Jesus said, but he... <coughs> then light your, light your body on fire, young lady. Light your body on fire if you want to go to hell. Because that's what it is. Folks, Jesus said, he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven... Are you doing the will of God the Father in heaven right now? By walking around in no shirts, taking pictures and selfies, acting tough and cool? Oh, folks, don't you understand all your mocking and all your childish behavior? When you stand before God in heaven, you're going to be like a little baby. You're going to be, you're, all your little boldness and mocking is going to, going to perish. It's all going to perish. It's, it's all going to perish. Yeah, you say that, sir, because you have breath in your lungs. You're so tough right now, aren't you? But guess what? When you stand before God, you won't be tough anymore. You won't be tough anymore. No, sir. You won't be tough anymore. You'll be crying like a baby, sir. You'll be afraid at that moment because right now you're facing the prospect of the lake of fire where you'll burn forever. No, I'm not going. No, no. I tell you this because I love you and I don't want you to burn in hell. Nobody hates but you, sir. You hate the word of God. But God loves you and he wants you to be free from your sin. God doesn't want you to perish in your sin. That's why he sent Jesus. <coughs> That's why he sent Jesus Christ into the world to die on a cross for the lost, for sinners. You know, it's the Bible talks about some people may die for a good man, an honorable man, and for, you know, for leaders. Some might even venture to die for a good man, but Jesus Christ shows his love in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for his enemies so that you so that you would have an opportunity to repent and turn from your sin. Right now, you are an enemy of God. You think that God loves you. You think that you love God. But right now, you're God's enemy. Right now, God, God's wrath is upon you because of your life choices. God's wrath is upon you. And if you died today, the wrath of God would be fully realized upon your soul. You act like you're not scared. But that should terrify you. That should terrify you, folks. In fact, Jesus said, what Jesus said in the house? scriptures, do not fear him that can kill the body, but I'll tell you who to fear. Jesus said, fear him who after he has killed the body can throw the body and the soul into hell. You see, 
God Almighty has the power God, the Holy to throw you into hell. Help me, help me with this logic, man. This plan is here. I should smoke it and get high up, but that's why God put it here. Help me with that logic, man. God's desire is not to crash you into hell. If God made earth, God's desire is not to crash you into hell. That's why Jesus came. Why is weed here? That's why smoking, Jesus came to the not earth. For getting high, then what is it for? So that you would have an opportunity That's what your logic to be is? free from I sin found the plant. And I should smoke the it. Death. My love is I know. I, I know you do, man. Don't, 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 don't but what are you doing with that today? But I'm, I don't look at grass, so I didn't so pick that grass, grass up and smoke it. <laughs> so my really lungs are made for smoking it up, for smoke. Getting high, having sex outside of there. Do you have a purpose? Dogs have a purpose. Cats have a purpose. Fucking trees have a purpose. Transgender, all these things. So why? If people figure it out. It. We smoke it, right? Because at the end of the day, when you die and you, you leave your way, body, that means it has a purpose, right? Some of you, wrong. because, because of your lifestyle, it's going to be a lot wrong. sooner wrong. than later. How? God does the not want you to have a lack of sobriety. The sinful lifestyle that you lead in drunkenness and homosexuality weed, you have a lack of sobriety. I'm promiscuous sex. That's what you just read out. Say it again. When you smoke weed, you have a lack of sobriety. Okay. It's not God's will. You have a lack of self-control. To get you to sin, you don't love Jesus if you're walking in sin. Don't deceive yourself. Where in the Bible does it say that? Where in the Bible does it say that? You do not love Jesus. No, I won't show up, young Where in the Bible does it say that? You need to repent and be born again, young lady. Lack of sobriety causes a lack of self-control. I will not shut up. I will preach the gospel of God. Come over here. By God's grace. That's really loud. Okay. Yeah, that's why I wanted you to come oh, over yeah, here. I got you. I, I thought you were just walking away. Okay, no, okay. I'm not walking away. No, okay. Okay, so when you smoke weed, I've never done it myself. Okay. But when I was a sinner, I was around lots of people doing it. I observed them. I saw what they did. They have a lack of self-control, a lack of sobriety. They were not understanding where they were, who they were, what they were doing. They wake up later on. They come down from the high. Okay. Didn't know where they were. That's not God's will for you. So what if you have a lack of self? What, what if you have self control while you are high? No one does. I do. No, you don't. I guarantee you're, you're not the same person. I'm high as shit right now. You're not the same person when you have your high. I show when you're high. No, you're not. How do you know? You don't know me. I don't have to know you. I know it's weed does to people. That's all I need to know. I'm, I'm, I'm on weed right now. And I'm having a conversation with you, right? So how do I have a lack of self-control if I'm having a... Go drive a car on the road, man. I will. Let's I'll see what happens. Oh, see? No, that's because I'm, that's cause I'm drinking alcohol. I'll admit, drinking alcohol is sin. I agree. But weed, I don't think that is. Well, that's because it's your sin. You're, what you're doing is you're making God in your image. What sins do you use? What's that? What sins do you, what sins do you do right now? No sin. I don't have any sin in my life. How do you know? Because I follow Jesus. I obey his word. What things have you done that may have been sinful in the past? I mean, I, I can talk about those things, but they're really insignificant. I don't do them anymore. Okay, in the past, when did you find Jesus? Almost 26 years ago. 26, in the past 26 years, have you drank a sip of alcohol? Nope. Well, no, I have. I have. That's sin. No, the Bible doesn't say that. But you're saying weed is sin. Right. But it, but, you get high. but it causes lack of self-control, correct? Alcohol no. causes a lack of self-control. If you get by drunk, your, no, no, by your no, hold on. no, no, there's a difference. If you get drunk, it does. You said I haven't had a sip of alcohol. A sip of alcohol doesn't make you drunk. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. That's, that's right. why you have a breath live right? That's right, that's okay. right. I'll respect that. What if you have a sip of But I haven't gotten drunk. Okay, all right, you haven't gotten drunk. But if I had gotten drunk, I'd be in trouble. Are you married? I am married. Okay. Just make sure. I, want, I just want to make sure. Because if you're not married, if you had sex, you have sex. That's true. All right. Just want to make sure. Just want to make sure. Say yes. So, okay. Just the way that I was taught growing up, if it was put on this, if it was put on God's wiener, that means doing it. Okay. Besides, obviously, like chemically, fucking imbalanced shit, like meth, heroin, that's. Uh, I'll, I'll touch that. But weed, right? If it's put on God's wiener, it's a natural plant. Why would it be a sin? We've already gone through this. God does not put anything on this earth, anything on this earth. You're listening. He doesn't put anything on this earth for you to smoke and get high off of. Does it say that in the Bible? The Bible, once again, the Bible wants you to have self-control. Not to smoke. Once again, the Bible tells you to have self-control and be a sober-minded. Okay. So when you are high, you lack self-control or not sober-minded. So, so if I can smoke weed and and not possible. Not possible. I'm high right now and I have self-control. No, go drive a car. 
And smoking too. No, I've driven been smoking. And I've been pretty good. No. Well, you haven't been pulled over. But if you get pulled over, you're going to be in trouble, and you know it. No, I've been. I've smoked and driven. I've been pretty good. My father's a cop. I've done it. Your father's a cop? Yes. Oh, that's interesting. I, I, I can imagine the shame that would bring to him if you got caught doing that stuff. No. He doesn't care? His, lo his logic is the same as mine. The way we were raised, so. I don't, are you Christian or Catholic? I'm Christian. Christian, okay, so I'm Catholic. So the way that I was raised up was, um, it's put on God's green earth, it's okay. Aside from, obviously, heroin and meth, because that, that stuff is really fucked up. Cocaine, all that stuff. Wait a minute, was it put on God's green earth? Cocaine is different, you add chemicals to it. Cocaine, meth, heroin, you add chemicals. You add things that will mix things together. What's wrong with that? Okay, so then by your logic, okay, so you're saying. No, I'm using your logic. I'm not using my logic. No, your logic. You're using, you're losing my logic right. against me. That's right. So then by you using your logic against me, no. what's wrong with me? Then? Your logic against you, not no. my logic. My, your sorry. logic against you. Sorry. My logic against me, then what is wrong with me? And your logic is not wrong, but my point is those other things are also not wrong. So then it's opinion based, correct? Well, for you it is, not for me. For me, it's God's word based. Okay, and mine is God's word based. No, it's not. It's opinion no. based. Are you, are you Catholic? I don't have to be Catholic. Catholicism is not based upon the Bible. Based upon sure? the traditions, yes. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Are you positive? Are you yes. Catholic? I was raised Catholic. Okay. I was not raised in the Word of God. Okay. I became a Christian at 19. So I'm Catholic, and I was raised in the Word of God. No. Nope. Nothing, nothing you say is backed up by the Word of God, young man. How do you know? God, but a Catholic. Are you Catholic right now? I don't have to be Catholic right now. I don't you Catholic do have now. to be Catholic. No, I don't. I know what Catholicism teaches. I don't and know, it's man. Wrong. Hey, do you like weed? Huh? You like weed? You like weed? All right, whatever. You think you think getting them to say yes is gonna make something good for you? It's gonna prove anything? I don't know. Maybe. You can't. I mean, everybody here like me wouldn't prove anything. So as a Catholic, I was raised in the Word of God. No, you weren't. How do you know? Because Catholicism is not based upon the Word of God. Is it though? No, it isn't. Can you prove it? I mean, I've argued with hundreds of Catholics over the years. If anything, can you prove that there is a God? So, Catholicism teaches you to atheism? No. Oh, okay. So now you're arguing for atheism? Excuse me? Now you're arguing for atheism? I'm not arguing for atheism. Well, you asked me to prove to you there's God. Prove to me that there is a God. I'm, say, I'm saying prove to me that there is a God in the, in the name of Christianity. Why, why would he do it with a Catholic? Why do I need to do that with a Catholic? Why would he do it with anybody? No, I said, why do I need to prove to a Catholic that God exists? Why does it matter if I'm Catholic? We both are in the name of God, correct? So why does it matter what my specific religion is? Yeah, I, I, so if, you're gonna talk, if a Muslim walks up, are you going to talk to him saying, no, your religion is wrong because I'm Christian and you're not? Right? Yes, I would tell him he's wrong. But my point okay, is, so this, this, is this, this is proving the non-sobriety thing. This is proving that, you, that it's, it's becoming uh, a waste of my time to speak with you about this stuff because you're not even thinking properly. When it comes to you being a Catholic, you already believe in God to be a Catholic, so why would I need to prove to a Catholic that God exists? Because they're different values. Catholicism is, pre is, is built upon God existing. Okay. At the least. But Catholicism and Catholic, right? Or not Catholic, that's the same fucking thing. Catholicism and Christianity, you see? right? Different values. You see? Say you don't you don't have a sort of mind, man. You're not even thinking right, man. What does it matter? You you in your right state would not think I'm a Catholic. Oh, I can come up prove to me that God exists. I can come up in my right state and still talk to you, proving that God either does exist or does not exist. All right. Raised as a Catholic, okay. Personally, yes, I am an atheist. I'm sure that I don't know if you believe in that, but I, okay. I grew up. I grew up Catholic, but as I grew older, I also do believe in science. Just because I study biomedical science, right? If you can prove all right, how how Earth was formed, how everything was formed, it's all mechanically engineered. I, I don't think I, I don't think I'm gonna really. I mean, I, I have plenty of argumentation. I deal with college students all the then time. Then say it. Then say it. No, because I think it's gonna be a waste of my time, waste of my breath. Well, because, because then, why my, you, then why are you out here? Because nobody's agreeing with you. So if it's a waste of your breath, then why not just say it? Because you're out here saying all this stuff and nobody agrees. That's not what I said. Except I'm, I'm, everybody I'm, here. I'm, that's not what I said. What I was saying but was... You're saying it's a waste of your time, and you're out here wasting your time. No, I was... If you're I, saying I, talking to me is a waste of your time, I'm trying to have a conversation. I'm not saying you're wrong. 
Nobody, ultimately, nobody knows who's right or nobody knows who's wrong. You sure about that? I'm positive. You may believe. Wait, wait, wait. is that right? It is an opinion. Is that right? It's an opinion. So you don't know you're right? I don't know that I'm right. You don't know that you're right. Yeah, I do. You may know, you may think. No, I know I'm right. It's opinion. I know I'm right. Opinion. Based on God's truth, God's word. And that's what you believe. Again, it's not what I believe. It's the truth. Opinion. The truth. To you, that is the truth. To me, that may not be the truth. There is no to me. Truth is truth, whether you believe it or not. That's called an opinion. That's, she actually had, and that's the exact definition of opinion. If I believe something is true, that's an opinion. I didn't say believe. I didn't say believe. I said if something is true, it's true whether you believe it or not. Is the grass green? Yeah, it's green. Is the sky blue? I mean, it, it looks blue. It looks blue, but the articles, right? Okay, okay. All right, Alice, you're Okay. That's opinion. Ultimately, that is opinion. You know what? I, I think I'd rather you just take one of these and read it when, when you're sober. Okay? I'll read it right now. And, and listen, listen, listen. Oh, listen, listen. Oh, hey, hey, listen, the other listen. answers are at the bottom. Jesus leading you. Leading you in your spirit. In the narrow way. But Jesus said, For broad is the way which leads to destruction, and many there be that go in their act. Look at all these people right now on the broad way and you don't even know it you're laughing and you're smiling and you're acting tough and you're a, you're a comedian and you're on the broad way leading to death and you don't even know it you can't even see that one second one second your life can be taken from you and if you're not ready to die before god you're lost for eternity in the lake of fire folks think about that the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom it's the fear of the Lord that cleanses us and makes us afraid of what's going to happen if we continue in our wicked ways. But Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to take that burden of sin. He bore it on the cross, and he died as an atonement to wash you clean. It's right there for you. It's right there for you. Jesus said, whomsoever will, whomsoever will come, come to the fountain of life. Jesus Christ, he's calling you to come. Don't you hear his voice in your spirit? Don't you hear Jesus calling you out of your sin today? Why don't you run to him? Flee from the wrath to come. Flee from your sin and run to Jesus. Run to him. Don't be a sinner anymore. God wants to make you a saint. He wants to make you holy. He wants to make you righteous. And he'll turn you into a holy saint of God, doing those things that are pleasing to God by faith in him call upon the name of the lord and be saved call upon the name of the lord and be saved the bible says let not your heart be troubled ye believe in god believe also in, in many also believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so i would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and whatever I go, ye know, and the way ye know. You know, folks, Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father except by me. Yes, folks, Jesus is the only way to heaven. Uh, hail Jesus because he's coming back. Hail but Jesus. You got to repent of your sin. That's good. All right, let's like this with that. This with that. Hey, Chris. Uh, I got one. You got one? Okay. Yeah, one did. Should have known that was going to happen. Chris has it. 
I was just gonna ask who does most of the speaking. What's that? Who does most of the speaking when you do stuff like this? Oh, we all speak. I was about to say, it doesn't really matter who does the most, but I was wondering, because me and him, we're the chaplains for our fraternity, and we're around a lot of guys that have never been around anything like this. They've never heard the word of God, you know what I mean? And whether or not they even respond to y'all, y'all are spreading the word, you're planting the seed. So I just want to say I appreciate you for that because you learn a lot more than you realize sometimes. Okay. And I know you're aware of that, but I just want to tell you from an outside perspective, I appreciate you for what you're doing. Thank you. So I, I, I'm very glad you're doing I this. I respect it too, man. Amen. Amen. Maybe take one of these and read them. Thank you. Give them somebody else. Yeah. John 316. I, no, I, really, I really appreciate it. Yeah. John 316. Tell me what it is. John 316. Why do you need to know that? I really want to know. You say it. Wait, don't you already know it yourself? God gave himself my life on myself. Well, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten God's Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already. He does not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. That's John 3, 16 through 18. Yes, Thank we, don't, you. we don't want to focus on 8, 16. We'll go to 17, and 18, all, too. All the way to 18. Yeah, so God wants you to be saved, man, but you got to repent. Yes, sir. And give all your sin, drunkenness, lying, Everything. lust, fornication. Everything. you got to surrender all to Jesus Christ, and Everything he will change you. Jesus. Yeah, he'll, he'll change you from the inside out. Yes, sir. He'll make you a new creature in Christ. Yes, and the sir. things you used to love to do, all the sin, no you'll, be, you'll hate those things and not want to do those things anymore. And you'll love Jesus and, the, and want to obey him. The biggest thing I've ever learned as a Christian, <laughs> no one sin is above yeah, another sin. They're all yeah, folks, like I was saying, don't, don't sit Jesus there and say, oh, I just I am the way. Don't touch that. It's all the same in his eyes. I, I am so the way, did, the truth, it doesn't matter. He's and the life. You if you no you man comes to the Father except right? by me. He calls you to repent and be holy. If, yes. if you're a Muslim, it's a matter of accepting him into your, your way to hell. If you're a Catholic, you're, you're, you're on your way to hell. If you're a Mormon, you're on your way to hell. That's what he expects of you. If you're sinning and you're on the broad way, you're on the way to hell, folks. You say you're sinning every single day and you're following Jesus. Because Jesus will never lead you to sin. No sinning. So Jesus won't lead you to your sin. sin. Yes, so if you're following Him, Jesus Christ. you're not sinning. Yes, yes sir. Right, but Turn if you're sinning, Jesus. you're not following you want Him. You right. yes, sir. No sinning. That's right. You don't, you don't have yes, to go to hell. No you don't have to yes, go to hell. Jesus can set you from your sin. Yeah, you Some will. of you may be laughing. I'm gonna get a tattoo. But you know the Bible no, says tattoo, man. that no preaching of the cross is yes, foolish. Yeah. Yeah. Word, man. That are yes, perished. Sam, let's go. You're perishing if if you're just laughing at us. I'm good. Thank you. That's what the Bible says. I'm just a messenger. This is the this is this is God's word. Oh, turn to Jesus, folks. He's calling you out of line tonight, folks. He don't want you to die in your sins. A lot of people say, we all are sinners. I don't heard uh, several people tonight say, we are all sinners. Well, where does it say that Christians are sinners? Because I don't see it in the scriptures, folks. You have to prove to me in the Bible. But Jesus said, go and sin no more. He didn't say, go and sin some more. He didn't say, go and try your best. He said, stop sinning. But you must willing to stop it. Stop the partying. A lot of you come from different states, colleges, and partying up with the world. All it does lead, lead to hell. But you do believe in God, according to Romans chapter 1. You believe in God according to chapter 1. Because you are born with a conscience that God... That, that, that you will seek God. And you know that there's a God. But you can't be a mocker either, folks. Oh, stop the partying. Jesus calling you out to the line. You're on the broad way, folks. If you want to be on the narrow way, turn to Jesus. You got to stop your sin. So it, it takes a lot of faith to, to uh, get rid of your friends. So some of you want to hang on to your feelings. But Jesus, he kept, he kept walking. He kept carrying that cross. And that's what you have to do. You have to deny yourself and take up your cross daily and follow after him daily. Right. Yes, it's worth living for Jesus. It's not worth living in this world. Oh, turn to Jesus, folks. Oh, all this drunkenness, drinking, smoking it up, partying it up. There's no, uh, there's no pleasure in that, folks. It's just temporary, temporary pleasure that leads to eternal torment. Oh, you don't, you don't love God. You don't love God. Not dressing like that. No, no, no. There's a lot of professing Christians out here tonight saying, I love God. I love God. I go, I go to church on Sunday. 
I have Bible scriptures. I wear a cross necklace around my neck. That still don't make you right with God. Oh, turn to Jesus, folks. He wants you to stop the vaping, the cigarette smoking, the fornication, the sex outside of marriage, the pornography, the masturbation, the lying, the stealing. Yes, yeah, folks. Give it up. Come, come to the foot of the cross. He's calling you out tonight. Oh, folks, we're living in the last days. There's a lot of mockers and people laughing at the preachers and the messengers of God. Oh, it's not good to mock, mock the, uh, the messengers of God, folks. Oh, Jesus laid down his life. Are you willing to lay down your life? Are you willing to drop the beer and pick up the Bible? I see you giving me thumbs up, but will you do that for Jesus? Oh, he took a beating, three nails. Are you willing to carry your cross? Would you take a beating like he just did in, in over 2,000 years? Oh, turn to Jesus, folks. There's a lot of wickedness going on. Oh. See how miserable they look with all that green stuff on their face, bro? Yeah, where is that from? Like a party? I don't party? know. They look so miserable, though, bro. Like, yeah, like it wasn't. It wants to walk around like that. Like it was forced upon him or something like that. I know. Was that from Hammerhead Fred? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, something like that happened last year, I think, at Hammerhead Fred. Did it? Yeah, pretty sure. You already committed adultery in your heart. Stop dressing like that, lady. way the world goes. So be a woman of God. Be a man of God. You only become a true woman and a true man if you repent of your sin and start following Jesus. You know, Jesus said in John 14, 15, if, notice that word if, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Oh, folks, do you love Jesus or you love your sin? That's what it comes down to. Love you, living in your sins and loving your sins. That won't lead you to heaven, folks. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. Is that not you? Is that not you in the line tonight? Loving your own self. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also per persecute you. If they have killed me, saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sinned. But now they have no clock for their sin. He that hated me hated my father also. Oh, folks. So when we come out here tonight to preach the gospel, he's calling you to repentance, folks. But we already been hated. People in our faces yelling at us, mocking us. You don't really hate us. You hate Jesus. That's all it comes down to. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then, the, then would my servant fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but now is my kingdom is not from hence. Now say is that I am a king to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, what is the truth? Jesus is the truth. Here's my voice. Yes, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Who the Son set free shall be free indeed. Even Jesus said, I am the truth. Is he lying when I say I am the truth? I am the way. You know, I am the life. No, he's not lying. He's the only one that can save you from your sin. You know, you must be willing to be humble, folks. God gives grace to the humble. He resists the proud. If you have pride in your heart, 
God is resisting you. But for the preaching of the cross, it is them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. <laughs> know ye that you are the temple of God, and that the temple of God is the in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no man deceive himself. If any man, if any man among you seem it to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is writ, he taketh the wise in their own trappings. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. All folks, you dressing? And modestly, just know that you're on your way to hell, folks. You're causing men, you're causing... See? Yeah, it, it just shows. It just shows your bad fruit. You don't care about God. You don't care about his words. And you sure don't love Jesus. You don't love Jesus. I'm going to hell. Say so what? I've come to terms with me going to hell. You don't have to. I have. You don't, you don't have to. You're still here because of God's grace. Humble yourself. Humble yourself. Oh, folks, here's a list of some sins. Some of you in the line is on this on this list. Know you not the, tem oh, okay. the, the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, is that you in the line tonight, a drunker? <clears throat> nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. You know, it, it just talk about homosexuals too, that is not going to uh, enter through the kingdom of God. You must repent of your sins and that, folks. You know, there's only two genders in this world, and it's male and female. God did not create us to, to be attracted to males when you're a male. And it sure didn't create the female to be attracted to the other female. You know, a marriage is, is between a man and a woman. <laughs> what? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you have brought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, and in, in, in your spirit, which are God. You know, a lot of people say, I, I can't be perfect, but here's a Bible scripture says that uh, you can overcome temptation. Just know that temptation is not a sin. You can overcome it, but you must be willing to have the Holy Spirit. There have no temptation taken you but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted of all that ye are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be also to bear it. Right. And the Bible says, already. you cannot drink no, the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the tables of the devil. Yes, folks, you cannot uh, live halfway into this world and halfway into heaven, having one foot in the heaven, having one foot on earth. You know, God, God is not going to accept that. That, that makes you a lukewarm Christian. No lukewarm Christians will inherit the kingdom of God. You must be born again, John 3, 3, to receive the Holy Spirit and the living water, folks. You know what? The question is, what is love? This is love. We come out here to show you love. No charity suffers long and it's kind. Charity it not. Charity then it not itself and it's not puffed up. Tonight, we already seen so many good bit of people being prideful in their sins. It just shows right there, pride. That's all you have is pride, pride, pride. You must be born again, you must be humble. See, you don't care. You don't care about God's word. All you do is care about yourself. And when you care about yourself, 
you are on your way to the, on the broad way to destruction, which is hellfire. And when God sends a sinner to hell, you're going to be screaming forever and ever and ever and ever and, and, and regretting. You know, you may be the only Bible, we may be the only Bible to you. So your problem is you have sin in your life, but the Bible can keep you away from sin if you just be born again and read the, read the Bible. I'll turn to Jesus, folks. Do not behave yourself unseemly. Seek it not her own. It is not easy for both. Think it no evil. Rejoice not in, in, in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bear with all things. Be, believe in all things. Hope in all things. Endure in all things. Charity never fail it. For whether there be prophecy, they shall fall. Whether there be tongues, they shall see. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. That's what love is, folks. God's word is love. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as it, in all churches of the saints. <laughs> Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Oh, you won't love it in hell. You know you want to go to heaven, but you won't be able to, you don't want to give up your sins. You love your sins more than God. Oh, folks, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he has done, whether it be good or bad. Oh, all of this stuff is going to be revealed, folks. All the hidden sins, the, the, the stuff that you're hiding from God right now. Oh, folks, everything's going to be revealed on, on judgment day. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for that. I remember when I used to be a sinner, when I used to go to nightclubs, strip clubs, and, with my so-called friends and partying up with the world. Oh, there's no peace in that. But I tell you, folks, you can become a new creature in Jesus Christ. Yes, he can set you free. That's what he done for me. That's why I'm out here to tell you the truth. There's not many people who tell you the truth. <laughs> for he saith, I have heard thee, and a time accepted, it, and in a day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the separate time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Yes, folks, you may not make it on your deathbed. Some of you planning for retirement saving up a lot of money and just going to ask God for forgiveness in your heart but you know folks oh turn to Jesus repent of your sins drop the beer pick up the Bible put out the cigarette smoke it's not funny it's not funny folks oh turn to Jesus you don't have to yeah like, yeah but, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You know, if you have the fruit of the Spirit, you will not be having weed, cigar, vaping, cigarettes in your hand, or a beer, or any alcohol, because that is not the fruit of the Spirit. Or cussing, lying, stealing, none of that is the fruit of the Spirit. <clears throat> Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doeth make it manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, 
away thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Yes, Jesus can give you the light, but you must be willing to lay down your life like he did. You must be willing to give up your sins. Y'all too young to be uh, living in sin, folks. You know, even kids, if babies die, kids die, teenagers die. You never know when you're going to die. Take that last heartbeat, that last breath. You know, some of you laughing and smiling. But one day, we're going to stand in front of God. And you better be born again of the Holy Spirit. Oh, you can give me the middle finger, but you won't be doing that to God on Judgment Day. Come again, the shouts of joy. 